that's drunk. Ah, The Adventures of Bayou Billy. I've always been morbidly curious about this game. It was made by Konami and released in June 1989, so it has to be good, right? Nope, it's a total bomb from one of the best developers of the era, but it sure wasn't from a lack of effort. Usually when games suck, it's because of limited resources or a strict deadline or just apathy and laziness. But in the case of Bayou Billy, they seem to get carried away with cramming as much stuff into the game as possible while ignoring the basics. To put it another way, when a movie is bad, it's usually obviously bad, like Battlefield Earth or something. But Bayou Billy is closer to a movie like Waterworld. It looks really cool, it should be good, but it just isn't. Maybe a better comparison for this game would be Crocodile Dundee 2, only it stars John Fogarty, who appears to have some serious neck problems. The game is split up into three entirely different game modes. First, you start out with a beat-em-up, and believe it or don't, this is Konami's first foray into the genre. And it shows because this is rough as hell. You can punch, kick, jump kick, and pick up weapons like knives, guns, and whips, but the hit detection sucks, and everyone has about a million hit points, which makes each enemy feel like its own one-on-one -on -one fight in Street Fighter. God help you if you're trapped with three enemies on screen at the same time, because this is some of the most aggressive enemy design I can remember seeing. These guys get stunned for half a second, then they're back on the offensive, and you're taking damage before you have time to get away. Just imagine playing Street Fighter 2 and having to beat Ken and Guile and Chun-Li at the same time, only you're stuck with the worst jump kick ever, and it's a toss-up whether or not the game will consider you close enough to cause some damage. It's not just the human enemies either, you got birds that flew straight over from Ninja Gaiden, you got Boris Zukov hitting you with a baguette. Maybe worst of all are these super annoying gators that seem like they're invulnerable. They die eventually, but jeez louise, they have a ridiculous amount of hit points. I mean, come on with this. But at least there's two other game modes that we can play. Once you slog through the swamp in this first beat-em-up stage, then you're shooting stuff with the zapper. Although the controller works too. That's what the game A and game B modes are at the opening menu. A is zapper and B is controller. These levels are totally fine for the most part, both the controller and zapper work well, you just slowly scroll from left to right and shoot bad guys in a typical gallery shooter, but there's one thing holding you back. If you run out of ammo, you die. What? How does that work? Does the gun have a self-destruct function that goes off when it's empty? You only get 100 rounds to start, and you can pick up at least one other refill, but yeah, you run out, you lose a life. Really stupid. But we still have the driving stages, maybe that can redeem this mess. Or maybe not. You get a machine gun to blow up other vehicles and a grenade launcher to take down planes, but nearly everything kills you. You run into another vehicle, you explode and die. You have one plane drop one bomb on you, you explode and die. You run into a post, you explode and die. Jeez, I'm surprised the puddles don't blow you up somehow. Again, this is decent enough as part of a larger game, but on its own it lags way, way behind other NES games like Super Spy Hunter or another game that merges three different modes together, Vice Project Doom. That is my main takeaway from playing Bayou Billy. The entire time I was playing this, I was thinking, man, Vice Project Doom does this so much better. That game had a little more time to marinate since it was released two years after Bayou Billy, and it shows. The big difference is in the platforming levels. They feel like a full-fledged game on their own, comparing favorably to other NES games like Power Blade or Shatterhand. The other two modes, which are also gallery shooter and driving stages just like Bayou Billy, those aren't perfect, but they're decent enough. As a whole, Vice Project Doom is probably a top 25 or maybe even a top 20 NES game, but Adventures of Bayou Billy, not so much. I guess you could say that Bayou Billy crawled so Vice Project Doom could walk, but really it's more like Bayou Billy crapped itself so Vice Project Doom could learn to use the toilet. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the one major strength in Bayou Billy, the music. This game has some jams. So yeah, Adventures of Bayou Billy is not good. It's not even a fun kind of not good, it's just aggravating and annoying. It's the rare bomb from 80s Konami which makes it a curiosity for some people, but rest assured this game freaking sucks. It really starts with the beat-em-up stages. If you were able to do a throw or at least one other move, and if you dial back the enemy aggression and give them fewer hit points, that would definitely improve things a bit. But you'd still have to move the ridiculousness of losing a life if you run out of ammo on the shooter stages, and you'd still have to fix the driving stage 
packages so that it's not so freaking easy to die. But I mean, why bother ruminating about all this stuff when you can go play a much, much better version of this game in Vice Project Doom? Go play that instead. Adventures of Bayou Billy is not worth your time. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.